Yeah. Hey. Hey. All right. Hey. Yeah, I mean. So we to take off. Hey. Uh. Please do remain calm. About to run against it and with a little bit of soul, no time. So Welcome to the Please Remain Calm podcast. I'm Ben Gonzalez. And I am Daniel Gonzalez. And we are here with a new guest, and we're finally back with a story with somebody who had some shit happen to them. <laughs> we have had like, what is it now, like three shows in a row, four shows in a row where the, well, a couple of those times the guest did have an, an injury story, but we just didn't get to it. Yeah. Because there was yeah. so much other shit They're to cover with them. They're an interesting, interesting yeah. person. <laughs> but the but meat yeah. and potatoes of our uh, franchise here is that we have people that come on who were involved in an emergency incident, whether they were the patient or the person who treated the patient. Or sometimes they're a patient who yeah. treats patients sometimes. Yeah, that is true. And now, that we're, is true. And now we're back to that. To so, the old yeah, formula. we got to get back to what works. You know what I mean? The, back to the bread and butter. So w- today we have uh, uh, my friend, uh, Captain Leroy Rogers, captain with the L.A. City Fire Department. Say hi, Leroy. Hey, hey, how you guys doing today? So Leroy, um, okay, I, I met Leroy when I got to 63s the, fir- the first time I was at 63s, which was actually when I left 9. So I had... I had like three years on the job, I think, four years on the job. Well, I had three years at, at, at nine, so I had four years on the job, something like that. And oh, I was, yeah, you had two different stints yeah, at 53s. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. Dude. So, um, a for punishment. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, man, Co- coming from nines, you know what I mean? And then I had been an explorer at, at 63s already. So I'm looking to get out of nines, and there's a vacancy at 63s. So I put in for it, not thinking for a second that I would get it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Boom, I get it. You get you get to this new station. It's a you know sixty three is a cool spot. It's by the beach, you know what I mean. Uh, and a lot of cool characters there. And Leroy was an AO there at the time when when I first got there. You know I'm there for about a year and then I leave right. And um, uh, we'll get into the first incident of yours that we're going to talk to because Leroy's had a couple things happen to him. Yeah, I'm this is a double I'm feature. Luckiest, I'm the luckiest unlucky guy. You can <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. So we'll talk about the first thing, which was which happened. What would you say about ten years ago or so? Yeah, it's been about ten years. Okay, so. I'm working somewhere else. I don't even remember where I'm working at. I run into somebody and um and hey, what's up, man? You know, you run into people at the hospital or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. And uh, hey, Gonzo, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? You know, how you been? Oh, cool. How's such and such? How's such and such? Bro, did you hear what happened to Leroy? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what? What happened, man? I don't know. I think I think he had a stroke. On duty, and that was one of those things because Leroy is not uh, an an old guy. At least at the time, it wasn't an old guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks a lot, bro. Thanks. <laughs> but um, you know what I mean? Fit guy. He's an AO. He's yeah. out. He's out drilling. It's not like he's a you know a captain or a chief that that's sitting around doing paperwork and stuff like that. He's out working yeah. and stuff like that. And he's a worker. Right. So like he's not somebody that you think you see and you think of like that might be that that the word him and the word stroke just don't jive. You know what I mean? Right. So didn't have a whole lot of information. So why don't we just kind of take it from there and kind of let's start at the beginning there and how well, what happened that day? Well, let's start a little bit before. So I was having a little, never had problems at work, man. I was having a little problem with my supervisor. Okay. And it was stressing me out because I, I'm like, how could you not like me? I'm like the coolest dude ever. Right? <laughs> yeah, come on, man. <laughs> like, how could you not like me, you know? Yeah. So I was, we had one of these things where I was just, dude, I was taking it home, like, my wife's like, dude, what's wrong with you? Like, never bring work home. Like, what's going on? Yeah. So I was really, really, really having a tough time. And um, just adding to s- stress just, levels. It was like unbearable. Yeah. Like, you know, it was and, and that things. shouldn't be understated, man. Uh, uh, having a, a supervisor that you don't get along with, especially at the fire station where you have to live with each uh, other. Yeah. And especially kidding? as a driver and you're driving, you know, somebody around that you don't, you're not getting along with. Right. And, you know, it was just like, all for the good like I couldn't understand like like I want the same thing you want like why are we going through this yeah it doesn't make sense it was a weird thing man yeah yeah he was just going for it and it was hard I couldn't I was asking actually reaching out for help yeah like hey somebody help me I'm having a tough time here help me right 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 (laughs) yeah (laughs) and um and nobody answered nobody answered (laughs) no and it kind of let me down a little bit but (laughs) anyway beside the point um so I remember we were going to lunch the guys wanted to go to Costco for lunch yeah and I, we had the little chicken thing, the little chicken wrap thing. To this day, I can't eat those fucking things. Yeah, <laughs> got a full aversion to chicken. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and he he sat in the rig. He didn't want to come eat with us. And mm. I would 
freaking stewing, man. I was at the table. I was like, I cannot believe this. We're like, where's this thing going? Yeah. And I go to the rig. I open the door, and he's sitting over in the seat. And as soon as I saw him, dude, it was like I got shot in the face. Really? Like, truly, 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 I sat in my seat and looked in the mirror to check my face to make sure I didn't get shot. Pain. Really? Just like, what just happened to me? Wow. Okay. Now, I Out really, there at really, the Costco parking lot? I was getting in the driver's seat. I, I sat in and the seat. And just like that? Just like that. All right. And I looked in the mirror. I closed the door and looked in the mirror like, what the fuck just yeah. happened to my They're face? Beasting like, me? Yeah, like, yeah. Like I somebody shoot me with a BB gun? Somebody sh- I got shot in yeah. the eye. Wow. And, I was and a, so it w- was it just in one spot? Was it your whole side of your no, face? It was, or? it was like somebody took a poker and stabbed me in the eye. Wow. Like Damn. it was weird. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Then I wasn't feeling good and stuff, so I'm like, all right, guys, uh, we just drove back to the station. I drove back to the station, like, and I told one of the firemen, I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to go in the TV room and lay down because I don't feel good. And he was like, you don't look good. I'm like, dude, leave me alone. Let me go take a break. Yeah. I'll yeah, be fine. Yeah. Don't turn on the lights. I'll be good. Yeah. He's like, well, let me tell Cap. And I was like, dude, that's the last thing I want. Yeah. Like, Damn. Dude, I'll be fine. Wait, you drove the truck back to I the station, the truck, though, dude, with your I drove, eye? Dude, I was yeah. dying, right? But I You're drove just looking back. out of one eye? Yeah. <laughs> no, just. I mean, I just, I drove back. I mean, it was like, I've been, I know my way home. It was yeah. just, oh, my God. I even backed the thing back in quarters. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Pirates used to sail ships like that. You know what I mean? So, partially yeah. stroked out. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I back hey, back uh, he only made left turns, but right. <laughs> right. eventually we got That's there and what shit. I'm <laughs> Holy shit. So I, I backed him back in quarters and I told the guy, like, hey man, I'm just let me let me take a break, man. I'm not feeling well. Next thing I knew, um I was waking up in Savan. Your partner. My, my old partner, your partner. Uh, par- paramedic. Shout out to Savan, uh, one of my good friends, but a really, really, really smart paramedic. Right, smart man in general, yeah, but a very, man. very, he's very good, good paramedic. Yeah, and it, and it was kind of intimidating for him. He's like, "Hey, man, you don't look good. Let me take your blood pressure." And I was like, "Dude, just leave me alone. Yeah. I'm fine." He's like, "Hey, man, let me just check you out." So he takes my blood pressure, put does a little EKG, and because I'm really feeling shitty, sure, I know I need it, but yeah, like <laughs> hey, <laughs> tough, that tough guy syndrome, yeah, right? right? But I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, dude. So yeah. he's like, hey, "You don't want to get that captain, right?" Or and so then ammo. I look and. I'm a kind of good judge of character. I look at him in his face, and he's looking kind of weird. Yeah, and you can see the I've concern. been to enough EMS incidents, so when they start showing each other the monitor, I'm like, "What the fuck is going on, bro? <laughs> yeah. What are you showing? <laughs> what are you showing? <laughs> Show me!" Yeah, turn like I can't yeah. even read it, but like, dude, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's like, "Hey, we're just gonna start the IV. We're gonna take you to the fucking doctor." And I'm like, "I really don't want to go. I'm good." Yeah. And, and um, I want to say Rich Matheny. Or one of the old guys there is like, hey, just go to the hospital. Let you let them check you out. I'm like, like I said, I'm really feeling bad. Yeah. But I'm like, all right. And so I tell Siobhan, Actually, the funniest thing is, Siobhan is shaking because he has to give me an IV. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, if you miss, I can see that. If you miss, <laughs> it's gonna be me and you. Uh, <laughs> and he funny, misses. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude, don't tell me you miss. Uh, and he's hilarious. just sweating bullets right yeah, now. That's yeah. the funniest thing. I tease him about it all the time. Yeah, that's funny. He's man. sweating bullets, and he, he um, he gets it. We go over to. Santa Monica, UCLA, and uh, they do a CAT scan and stuff, and kind of everybody's there, and they come back, and they say, hey, uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, you got to bleed. We're going to do what we, everything we can. And I'm like, what? No shit. <laughs> I'm like, I got to bleed. They're like, yeah, you got to bleed. Something's going on. Wow, and man. Where are you at? Which you At are? Santa Monica, UCLA. Oh, okay. UCLA, Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. And there weren't uh, stroke centers back then. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was. Uh, you just kind of yeah, went. Well, well, there were neuro. Ten. There were. Uh, I think they had SRC. Was that, right did then. we? Right. They well, were just starting that out. Yeah. Because now, that now, now we have. When, when you suspect a stroke, there are specific and yeah. different levels of hospitals that are specific to so, for for strokes um, that we take, and they got a whole stroke team that's right there and meets you at the door to to because time is important with things like this. Right. You know? Right. So, needless to say, they transferred me to Big UCLA. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the next hour, so I was transferred there. But the thing about it was, which is weird, is they couldn't figure out where I was bleeding from. Oh really? wow! No, they just could see the blood in they there, could but see the, couldn't see where it was coming from. This bleed, and it's getting bigger, but they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Oh wow! So it was the weirdest thing. Like, okay, well, what do you mean? 
well, we want to do surgery, but we don't really know what to do here. Yeah. At this point, they'd done a CT scan. Yeah, they'd done a CT it. scan. They had, you know, they took me to, like I said, UCLA. Then they started doing all kinds of tests. They started going in through my groin to figure yeah, out got an what was going yeah. on. Yeah. Finally, they did a spinal tap ah. to start drawing fluid off my brain to, to help with the swelling. They were giving me dilatin. They were doing everything they could to help with the swelling yeah. to make room for this bleed. Right. That they couldn't find. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> and how much time has passed at this point? Uh, you know, I was in there for two weeks, man. Holy moly. They, Did you feel your symptoms change? Well, it's, it's, I'm, I'm happy to say I, I can walk now. Yeah. But, like, I had to learn how to walk again. Wow. It, was, yeah. it was one of those things where it was like, and I tell people this all the time, and it, it actually changed my outlook on life. Yeah. Because everything that I thought was important, the real thing was, I wanted to play with my son again. Yep. Like, real, real, real. Like, everything else that you would think is important, all I wanted to do was play with my son. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. it was the weirdest. I couldn't think of anything else. Uh, everything else is just silly at that Nothing point. Nothing else yeah. mattered. All I could say is, I want to play with my son. It's uh, it's interesting <laughs> that yeah, you say I that, man, that, because, man. um, uh, uh, First of all, that's how that's how I think about life in general, right? But you're not the first person to say something like that to us in here. You know what I mean? Uh, Dave, we had Dave Wayner in here uh -huh. talking about his incident in Hawaii, and he kind of said the same thing. Like all I could think about was like, a, I'm leaving my kids, I'm leaving my family. Like I, I, I feel bad for leaving them. I, I just wanted to be there with yeah. them. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you get in a situation like that, and then especially since. Everything's such a question mark right. at that point. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, like, that nobody had to knows be the what's scariest going on. thing. It was like, what's going on? So, like but, I said, they did the spinal tap, yeah. which was you talk about women having an epidural. Like, I feel sorry for him. I told my wife, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, spinal tap, spinal tap, yeah. lumbar like, puncture. That's crazy. Was like, I'm I'm not a small guy. So they were like bend over and they're like stabbing me in my back and I feel like I'm getting struck by lightning. Yeah. Swear to God, yeah. it's like a nail. <laughs> they're they're hammering like, in I your back. I feel like dude. I am getting struck by lightning and he keeps missing and I'm like, dude, yeah, okay, I can't bend over anymore. And finally, uh, the actually uh, another part of the story, but an old guy came in. And he bit me over a chair, and he got it. Yeah. But the funny thing about being at UCLA was I w was joking with him, like, hey, where are the gray-haired doctors? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're too young. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's the old guys? Wait, when yeah. were you born? 80, yeah. 84? Are you a resident? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, where's the real doctor, yeah. dude? Like, yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's true, man. All, all those teaching hospitals, you yeah. get those young, young doctors I, going through. And the thing about it was I had droves, like, it was classroom in my room because they couldn't figure out where I was bleeding from. Yeah. And yeah. They were, it, I could tell they were like studying and trying to figure it out. And Yeah, you're a teaching case, man. Yeah, I was yeah. a teaching case. And it was kind of one of those things where they never found where I bled from. Really? They never found never. it. Like, well. Did it just stop on its it own? It just stopped. And they, they, said, clean, they it, cleaned uh, out the clot and stuff like that? Or they, they, said they just it left obliter it? Obliterated. Wow. Um, they said it happens. So they never clipped you or Nothing, anything? Nothing. It just stopped. They said it, it shunts itself and goes away, which is kind of uneasy for me because I'm like, yeah, when's it going to happen? Again? Dude, what the heck's going on? Like, yeah. how's it going to happen? And what's really even more uneasy is I'm talking to the doctor like this and the other. He said, well, if it happens again, you won't know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> cool. that, was, that, that was my final parting diagnosis from uh, the doctor. All right, like, well, thank you, sir. If Appreciate it happens it. again, don't worry about it. You won't feel it. Man. Wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Holy it had started off like just your eye, your face, like like a Bell's palsy kind of thing or something with know. pain, yeah, and then I, it just went your entire. I didn't right go. Side? No, it was weird. It was like, like I said, I felt like I got shot, mm -hmm. and I just had this excruciating headache. Yeah, like nothing else. But yeah, when I think about it, like I remember, like some things I don't remember. Like people tell me I was humping. I <laughs> I would hump. Really? And they were like, dude, this is the weirdest thing. You just kept, kept humping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's that's why good... you were sitting there? Yeah, like I was in the hospital bed, and I would hump. Hmm. <laughs> and they were like, dude. You just... Hey, you go back to what you know. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, they're like, dude, it was the weirdest thing. You just kept humping, and it you could like stop. It was like a posturing thing right. or something. You know? It's a solid yeah. It's a solid excuse yeah. to have, though, to hump whenever you want. Right. You know what I mean? When you're home or whatever. And actually, it's back yeah, again. Honestly, sometimes wife I find want myself you. doing it. It's kind of weird. but. Um. Yeah, man, it's. Uh, I, I think uh, one of the big takeaways here, from from your story, is um, is you got to listen to your body. 
too, especially as you're getting older. Like we had uh, Andy Rea in, uh, Captain 2 from 61, <laughs> that had a cardiac arrest on uh, Truck 61. And he talks about feeling weird. You know, I mean, before uh, and all and these run, signs that he ignored, yeah, like running from the, on the night treadmill before, and he's the got whole pressure, day. feeling tired, and stuff like that, and wound up having the heart attack and stuff like that. So, you know, I think that's an important point to make here, man. Is that like these types of things? Whenever you're when when you're getting when you're getting a little bit old, and you're talking about, I mean, you weren't that old at the time, but you talk about de- things dealing with your heart and dealing with your brain. Time is super important when you're dealing with those things. Well, the important the thing that I take home from it, and like I said, I'm the luckiest, <laughs> unlucky guy you can probably yeah. find. My email is Lucky Leroy. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. um, there have there've been a few firemen since then that I've known. Mm-hmm. That this happened to them at home; and they died. Yep. Yeah. If this had happened to me at home, I would not have cared. I went home upstairs, went to bed. My wife would have never known. Yep. Because I wouldn't even told her I had a headache. Right. Yep. And I would went to sleep. And that's how it happens. The blessing is. It happened to at work, mm-hmm. where some guys are like, mm, "You don't look quite right." Yeah, yeah. it's not like you. Yeah, and it was a blessing. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. The true blessing is that I have very minimal um, side effects from it. Yeah, um, I was actually studying for captain at the time, and Russ Weck would bring me my study material. Yeah, oh, really? And he was like, "Read." Yeah. Read. Read. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like one of those things where it's a mind exercise. When I finally could get up, I would try to walk. And I was like, okay, I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. Yeah. And I still have left-sided weakness. Like, yeah. I know it. I can kind of mask it a little bit. I have a, my wife's like, yeah, I can see your limp still because she saw me from day one to yeah. where yeah. I am now. So sure. she still notices it. Um, but it wasn't enough to keep me off duty. Yeah, I yeah. Finally, I got back to work within the ne- next year or so. Was and trying to go for a captain, like a thing that kind of like kept you like focused, like you were like like yeah, it kept, your mind it gave sharp me something studying. to do. It kept me sharp. It kept yeah. me like studying. And he, like you know, I was missing class, and he, after class, he would come and bring my re- my study material. Now, yeah, yeah. Did I remember it now? But <laughs> 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 did I really care at that point? Not really. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it was just gesture. It was really nice, and it kept me sharp. And the doctor was like, "Hey, dude, read." Because, you know. Yeah, and you're exercising your brain. Right. Yeah. So I, I had a pretty good recovery. Am I scared sometimes? when I Like, I don't get headaches. Mm-hmm. And now when I get a headache, I'm like, oh, oh Yeah, God. yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or I had a sinus yeah. infection one time, and I was like, uh, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go to UCLA and get this thing checked yeah. out. Because I'm like, no, yeah, no, no. Just to no, be no. safe. <laughs> just yeah. to be safe. But that's <laughs> the smart way to go about this <laughs> yeah. shit now, man. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you have to. You can't ignore it. You can't ignore when your body's talking to you, yeah. especially after an incident. Like that. Yeah. And that's, it lends itself to, like, me, when I run on anybody, you know, and they tell me they have a history of, of anything like that. You know what I mean? It's mm. uh, That would be, like, the first thing I say to people. Because a, a lot of people don't want to go to the hospital, man. You, you yeah. tell them they no, need to go. Nobody wants to go to the hospital. Uh, no. And they're like, oh, I don't want to go. And it's like... You never know. Well, you, you know could what I mean? never. I could, look, I was young, pretty, fairly young. <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't think anything happened like that, especially like I got to bleed. Like, yeah. dude, I got a yeah. migraine. Probably no the last deal. thing to enter your mm-hmm. mind, man. Yeah, yeah. never Sleep it off. thought about it. Yeah. So you know, I'm happy. Like I said, I'm glad. Just blessed. I you had have to a, go um, do uh, like outpatient scans like every six months or something. No, no, I don't. You know, like I said, the doctor's like, "Hey, man, it's gone. We never found it. We wanted wow. to do so. We wanted to. Do, we were ready." To do surgery. Amazing. And they checked for two weeks and couldn't figure out where I was bleeding from. Wow. And then it just resolves. So I still have Julie says I always had a dead, dead spot, but I got a little spot in my brain. And I'm like, yeah. hey, yeah, this right here <laughs> didn't get any blood. <laughs> 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 I haven't found uh, where the de- deficiency is, but maybe I can't fly or turn invisible. Or yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. It was my superpower area. Yeah, or you're something. a concert pianist yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. 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 you can't you read know, minds, yeah. something right. like that now. <laughs> something yeah. like that happened, but hey, you know. Um, uh, one time, kind of a similar story. Um, uh, this one time I was going to the beach with the boys, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, I stopped off at 63's to, I think I was gonna sign up for a saw day or something like that. Right, I back in. Nobody's at at the station, and uh, I I have the app door open. I run right in the the door to the front office is right there. So the boys are in the car, and I'm uh uh you know doing my thing on the computer, and I go to leave. And a motorcycle cop, LAPD motorcycle cop, pulls up. And he goes, uh, is anyone here? I go, uh, I go, no, the guys are all gone right now. And he goes, oh, damn. And I go, I work here. I'm off duty. You know, you need something? He goes, uh, oh, no, it's all right. You know, don't worry about it. 
and uh and and uh he's just sitting on his bike i go back inside for something that i forgot in the front office and uh he comes he comes walking in and he goes hey i'm gonna sit down in the in tv chair if you don't mind just for a minute go, yeah man make yourself at home you know so he's in there and i go to leave and uh i i went to just tell him hey i'm gonna leave but you can just you know go out the front door and lock it but when mm -hmm. you leave and uh, I go, I go in there to talk to him, and it's kind of the same deal. He's sitting in a chair, in the TV room in the front seat, and he is pale, sweating bullets. And uh, I'm like, "Whoa, dude!" I go, "Are you okay, man?" And he goes, "Oh man, I don't feel too good." And I'm like, "Yeah, you don't look so good, man. Let me um, there's nobody there, you know yeah. what I mean?" So we used to have that box. There was a box that had um. I say, was there gear? Yeah, well, there's like a um, uh. uh Still alarm box that we had okay, up there. So yeah. I grabbed that, take his blood pressure, blood pressure sky high. So I call Metro, you know, send me mm -hmm. a rescue and send me an engine and um, start talking to him about what happened. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I don't know. It's, you know, I pulled a girl over earlier and uh, I walked up to her car and I couldn't, I couldn't talk. I couldn't mouth. I couldn't get any words to come out. And he's like, I just turned and walked back to my bike and got on road off. She must have thought I was crazy. And he's like, and, uh, you know, I, my uh, radio wasn't working. And so I rode all the way to Piper Tech to get my radio fixed on my bike. And I had my cable plugged into the wrong slot. Something s stupid, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, it's pressure yeah. sky high. Stroke, dude. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I went the full stroke route with him. And it wound up being not that serious. It might have been like a, a small TIA or something yeah. like that. But it just go. Le what, the point I have uh, making it by bringing that up is that little signs you got to pay attention to little signs and especially when it comes to like things with stroke anything to do with your brain depending on where that bleed is or where that blockage is you might get funky little things happen yeah. like a piercing pain in one spot on your right. eye or you know god i got a, cr a cramp like hell in my pinky right. like i can't my pinky won't stop cramping There's funky little the outside of my leg just the outside is numb it's weird i don't know what the hell you know what i mean things yeah. like that if you ever have something weird happen like that, you know, and you're a little bit older, you got high blood pressure, you got some of those like risk factors, mm -hmm. take yourself in to get checked or call 911, you know, uh, take yourself in if you can. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you can do it safely. <laughs> so <laughs> Leroy didn't have anything the night before. Anything. You said like, like uh, my wife, I, yeah. my wife, after the fact, she was like, hey, you know what? I took a picture of you last night when you were at the table. Look, and my eye was drooping. And she's like, look. It's like she's the like, ring. I noticed yeah. it. She's yeah, like, yeah. but you know, I didn't pay any attention. I had to figure you were tired. You, you know, you're yeah. always frowned up. So, just thought it was normal. I, did, you know, didn't yeah. pay any attention to it. I get that droopy eye when I'm tired, <laughs> you know? or when I yeah. have one too many. Right. <laughs> so she's like, you know what? I, I didn't pay any attention to it. But now, when I think back and look at it, it totally had a, a droop. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. There man. wasn't anything else you noticed though before you lunch, know, dude, though, right? No, man. I was yeah. like I said, I was like I'm not a stressed guy. Like yeah. It's not me, and I was had I was experiencing something that I have never experienced. Like, yeah, like I truly, truly was having a knockdown, drag out disagreement, like for months with this guy. Like, and I couldn't get it, and I, nobody would listen. And I'm like, I know I'm right, and I got I'm responsible for. I feel responsible for my guys. Yeah, yeah. And it's just one of those things where it's like, dude, I. I just can't let you beat up on my guys like this. Right. I, yeah. We want the same thing. How come we can't come together with this? Yeah, exactly. You know, we want the same thing. Yeah. We truly, at the end of the day, we want a proficient well-running station. Right. Right. Yeah, and exactly. How are we coming hell? about it? Like, <laughs> yeah. How come we can't yeah. just... Well, can't we dude, all just get along? Dude, you can totally be the man. boss. I could care less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so that would be enough. You know what I mean? If mm -hmm. if that's all that happened, <laughs> would, that would have filled this show fine. We would have been perfectly fine. We could have talked about that for an hour. But it but wasn't enough for Lucky Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Lucky Leroy. God had more in store. Yes. So Leroy had something happen to him separate from this, and this was how long ago? How long did this? This was happen? two years ago. No, last year. Last year. Last okay. New Year's Eve. Right. I hadn't seen Leroy for a while, right? And uh, he pops up at 63s because uh, he, he left there and wound up promoting and stuff. And he pops up at 63s and we're chit chatting. Hey, what's up, man? How you been? Da -da -da. And uh, somebody walks up and goes, Hey, how's your arm? And I go, What happened to your arm, man? And then he showed me his, his scar on his arm. Okay. 
And I don't know if we got that on the cameras. I've but never seen like a compartment syndrome scar like that <laughs> in, in, in person. That's legit, man. That's so legit, man. Yeah, Le Leroy legit. had yeah. uh, compartment syndrome, which is something that's really pretty rare. I mean, it's not something that yeah. happens all the time. Um, and I'll just kind of briefly. Hey, listen, I'm not a doctor, okay? But base essentially, compartment syndrome is when you have uh, a, a trauma, and, and you stop me if I'm describing this incorrectly, uh, Leroy. But you have some sort of trauma, some part of your body, um, that causes uh, damage to to enough to cause swelling, right, uh, inside of the fascia of the, of the muscle of your arm. That swells up. You build up pressure. That pressure, since it has nowhere to go, since it's not a, an open wound, uh, starts putting more and more pressure on on the muscles, uh, more down toward your your bones. Puts that pressure, 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 which doesn't allow blood to get in there, which means you're not getting oxygen, you're not getting uh, glucose to your cells. Right. Um, can potentially cause cell death, and you could lose a limb uh, from from having compartment syndrome. And the pressure is like gas building up under the it, tissue. Pretty pretty much, just man. Crushing down on the um, on the tissue. And and the the way you relieve the you have to relieve that pressure essentially, and so essentially they cut they cut your arm open. They relieve that pressure. And allow that swelling and stuff like that and treat you so that the swelling goes down. And that's how they repair that thing. So let's, that's what we're dealing with, with this injury. <laughs> let's go back to, this happened in Glamis? This happened in Glamis. So what, for those that don't know, what is Glamis? So Glamis is our sand dunes right out, well, the California, New Mexico, Arizona border, right out the 8 freeway. Right. Um, probably the biggest sand dunes. Everything you see on the movies, it looked like they're in the Sahara Desert. Yeah, yeah, that's glamorous. Um, very remote. Although a lot of people go there, a lot of people get hurt yeah. there. Sure, I've been going for years. Little minor injuries, no big deal. Dirt bikes, quads, Dirt bikes, quads sand, side by side. Yeah, sand rails. Just it is the place. Uh, if you are a off road enthusiast, you know about glamorous. And it's a big party. Uh, it's just a big party. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's 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 a great place. Been like I said, been going for years. Yeah. So I have a side by side, which uh, I've been. Rolling and flipping around and playing in for the longest. Yeah. Um, I tell everybody who gets in my car, hey, if the thing starts rolling over, keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle. Yeah, I'm all. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Side by at side, like a dune buggy? Like a dune buggy. Okay. It's like a four wheel. It's like a car, yeah. but yeah. like a dune buggy. But just open cab. Yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. got a roll yeah. cage. It's got a roll cage yeah. and everything you know, in it. Four and points. Right. It's got doors, but right. it's no windows or anything on it. Um, I'll tell you the moral of the story. When it's over, you'll figure it out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, Needless to say, I rolled this thing over and didn't really roll it over. Well, not the normal rollover, because like I said, I've been doing this thing for the longest, and I rolled it over and it was brand new. I had a buzzard bait or whatever. Sure, I, yeah. I, it was brand new. I was so heartbroken. Like, totally <laughs> rolled this thing over. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Remember, my brakes are not my friend, but okay, I got that. So here we are a couple years later, and uh, we go up these really steep dunes, and I'm following a guy up, and he's in a smaller car than mine, and he's barely making it, and I'm like, Oh, that's pretty steep. And yeah. I think about turning around, and I look at the people behind me, and they're starting to turn around too, so I can't really turn around because they're kind of in my way. And I, out the corner of my eye, I see him hop, pop over the dune. So I point his direction and gun it, gun it up this yeah. hill because I need all I can get. Um, I came off the top of this dune, and the car in the air started rotating onto the driver's side in the air. Oh, shit. Damn. And... Normal, like a normal rollover, I know keep my hands in the car, but this is one of those things where I'm gonna land on this door, sure, yeah. And I'm like, I can't There's help no it. way to brace yourself, yeah. I'm it. like, yeah. okay, I don't want to hit my head on a roll bar or anything. It's just how fast shit. are you going at this I'm, point? I'm not you really going fast, but I'm fast enough off the ground, sure, yeah. okay. And the car is on its side, yeah. And I'm gonna land, and I put my hand down just out of reaction, sure, man. Ah. just yeah. out of reaction because you're landing, yeah. right. And since I'm moving forward, it drug my arm backwards, and the car uh, landed on my arm. Um, I... Yeah, it was all bad. But, you know, the thing about it, it was weird. And I, I say I'm never wrong because, you know, I'm like, I'm laying there. My, cat, my, my son's in the car with me. And he's like, you okay? I said, dude, I just broke my fucking arm. And he's like, really? I said, yeah, I broke my arm. No big deal, man. I'm like, I broke my arm. They're kind of made to break. Sure, yeah. <laughs> it happens, man. Yeah. I got a broken arm. Yeah. So we rode a car over. My kid jumps in the passenger seat, drives me back to the camp. I get on the phone. Away. I say, I told my wife to unhook the truck and trailer because uh, I got to go to the hospital. Broke my arm. She's like, huh? I said, broke my arm. Okay, no big deal. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 
no happens. Big, yeah. shit, shit happens. happens. Boom. No big deal. Car's right. Everybody's good. Broken arm. <laughs> I can live with it. Nothing feels different about it yet. No, it's just a broken arm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know how broken arms feel. <laughs> <laughs> like it sucks that I broke yeah. my arm, yeah. but yeah. I'm gonna have a cast. Broken on. arm. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna have a cast on. Yeah. No big deal. So I go to the hospital and they're like, uh, so what happened? Uh, you know, did it get crushed? I'm like, yeah, but it's in sand, so I'm not really worried about it. And they're like, well, we're not going to put a cast on it just in case it swells up because you said you crushed it. But um, How far is the hospital? Like, how long did it the, take you to get to the hospital? The hospital is maybe 30, 45 minutes away. Oh, okay. Right. So it's no big deal. Not too like far, they, yeah. And they deal with trauma all day long. Sure. That's what they do. Yeah. People die there. Sure. Like, all the time. Um, so they give me this half cast. And they're like, okay, if it swells up, you know, get to a doctor, this, that, and the other. So, of course, I go back to camp. I'm not trying to ruin everybody's trip. Sure, like, yeah. So you're in a soft cast? Yeah, I'm in a little soft cast. Yeah. Got a little sling on. I'm like, a couple of shots of Jack, a couple of pain pills. You got to have Boom, let's go. Not yeah. saying they were prescribed to me, but <laughs> just not this time. <laughs> right? Because, yeah. like, hey. I'm, get back and jump in the passenger seat. Right, you yeah. know, no big deal, man. I'm here to camp. I'm not going to mess up anybody's trip. When sure. they x-rayed you at the hospital, it was just... Just radio owner, just a, a radio yeah. break. No big yeah. deal. Like okay, routine, you know, routine. Yeah, but they didn't. They told me, hey, we don't want to put cast on just in case it swells up a little bit. You know, sure. So I'm like, okay. So I go back, like I said, and I wake up the next morning, and my leg, my arm is the size of my leg. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like it looks weird. Where to, where it was actually just, injured, yeah, or no, where it was injured in my forearm. No shit. Elbow it down. was so big that it was oozing fluid. Holy shit! <laughs> and I'm like, like just out of the pores. Yeah, just like like, like seeping, have, like little spots right here. Yeah. Where it just was like wow. Like we no, see like nowhere a else right to go. It was, no, yeah. it was just oozing fluid. Holy shit! And I'm like, cool, cool. <laughs> pain, pain, like you can believe yeah, or not? It was really? Painful, but yeah. I was on yeah. Jack and Vikings. It's more like, freaky yeah. though, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I broke my arm, but yeah. whoa, this is weird. Oh yeah. <laughs> We forgot to tell you from the stroke, Leroy feels no pain. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, yeah. Numbness yeah. on that side. Yeah. yeah. That could probably be it. Um. <laughs> Damn, man. No shit. So I jump in the truck. I tell my wife to get in the passenger seat, get in the back. I drove all the way home. Like seven hours away. No big deal. Yeah. One arm. Got it. No big deal. Back to the trailer up my driveway. My wife's like, we're going to go to the hospital, right? And I was like, <sighs> look at you. Yeah, I guess we'll go to the hospital. Yeah. So we go to the hospital and, uh, they look at my arm, like, they're the same thing. Like, whoa, when did this happen? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yesterday yesterday morning, about 8 o'clock in the morning. You're like, uh, did you not go to the hospital? I said, yeah, they put this little gauze bandage and this half thing on me. They're like, all right, let me get, you're going to go into surgery. So, Just like that, Yeah. Huh? So doctor comes. He's like, hey, this is what's going on, boss. He's like, uh, the break, 15 minutes, I got that. He said, the damage to your the tissue loss, you could possibly lose your arm. Yeah. Oh man! <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's real, dude. Jeez. When they see compartment syndrome, <laughs> it's automatic surgery, yeah. dude. Like, oh yeah, like, they do not. Like, yeah, yeah, he was like, uh, "You could possibly lose your arm." He said, "I'm just going to give you the real. We're going to see how much damage we can do. I mean, that's done." Yeah. So the reason this sore is so ugly because, uh, like, when you overcook a ballpark prank, yeah, or yeah. something like that, it pops, pops open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when they cut my arm open, that's Essentially exactly what that. it did. It was yeah. no nothing to. Yeah. Like uh, like those biscuits when yeah, you yeah. Those biscuits. There was no no room or anything to pressurize gas yeah. to sew yeah. it back together. It was wow, like, okay, we can't get it back together. So did they do they cut it open and let it so sit there open? Yes. Yeah, or so is it like they cut it open and let it sit there open? They put a vacuum pump in my arm so they were draining off fluid. Uh, oh yeah. Back, yeah. They're just draining off fluid. So I had a couple surgeries and then uh, they did skin graft. Um, I wish they would have given me cadaver skin. I don't care what color it was. <laughs> uh, like that, huh? yeah. I don't care what color it was. They could use green cadaver skin. Uh, a skin graft hurts. Yeah. Where'd they get thigh. it from? Uh, from my thigh. So from my knee oh up my to my God. hip. They took all the skin off the front of my thigh to cover this up. Um, that was the most painful shit ever. Mm. I'm going to let you know right now. My thigh hurt more than my arm. Oh, my God. For man. how long? Oh, for months, really? Yeah, because oh, it was nasty. I mean, it's like essentially a yeah. burn, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. it's like, dude, it was the most painful. Like I couldn't walk. I couldn't, like, it was Ugh. like you don't know how much you use your thigh, like, just to. Oh, it was horrible. Oh I my mean, goodness! It hurt yeah. more than the arm. Yeah, but got through it, and then just almost a year of. I just finished therapy a few months ago, 
as far as massaging it and they have this like you know how they put in the hospital they have this this pump that that blows up like mm-hmm. a bladder yeah. yeah well i would have to sleep with that because of the swelling to try and get the swelling down because swelling i down. couldn't move my arm like I, the, I couldn't touch my face i couldn't do anything because everything just to try was, to force the fluid out right out of i just could not it just wanted to fill my arm up with fluid yeah man yeah. so it was what a, a nightmare yeah it was just one of those things where i was like oh i got my arm but yeah I, I, I shouldn't say this, but the guys. So I had just transferred into my unit, which is a special duty spot, and the guy whose seat I took, I took that seat January first. This happened New Year's Eve morning. So wow. I transferred into the special <laughs> duty <laughs> wow. that morning. Well, the guy that space, and I hope he's not. I'm not going to say anything bad about him, but he's the one who got shot back in the '94 riots. Oh wow. A.L. Yeah, the A.L. Yeah. Well, he, his Wasn't left he arm Miller? was... Miller? Yeah, Scott Miller. Yeah. 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 His left arm was dead. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm like... A trip, man. Is it the seat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's Leroy's crazy. retiring, you yeah. know, he's the... Yeah. Got his... <laughs> <laughs> The guy that's taking his seat, and he's like, like, let me tell you about this chair, son. Right. <laughs> yeah, right? But don't get used to that arm. Yeah. It gave me a whole new respect for him because I couldn't figure out how he did control out delete with one hand. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, what do you, you know? Yeah, that, I'm like, what? dude, I was trying to use <laughs> pencils because yeah. I was like, okay, well, he did it with one hand, so I, was, I can be off duty for a little while, but yeah, yeah. I can do it like dude. It's probably you can't say he didn't do it. The dude, before, the the dude the before me didn't have a left arm that was working, so I could possibly do it. No yeah, big deal. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, man. But when I started trying to shuffle paper and remove paper clips and things like that with one arm, I was like, holy cow. Yeah, a whole new world, huh? It was like so difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you get a stack of papers with paper clips on them, and I'm like, so what do I do with this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the silly things, man, that you don't think Dude, about. Control all delete, like turn on a computer. It was like I was trying to get pencils. I, I made a little thing I could put on control all delete and put. Uh, do, That's it was, funny. It man. was the weirdest yeah. thing, but yeah, you needed Miller to train you. Yeah, I truly, truly, and I wanted to ask him some things, but I didn't want to be offend, offend him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, one hand working. Hey, one arm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it was just one of those things where I was like, God, man, I had a whole new respect for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing this thing with one arm because I don't. I, it's funny, man. When um, when that went down, uh, they had a press conference when he came out of yeah. the hospital. Full mm. circle. And uh, um, the big picture of him in the Times, and our dad is in the background like this. Really? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he want fireman Clear standing day. right behind him uh-huh. yeah. when he's coming out of the hospital. Yeah. So it's our dad right behind him because at Cedar Sinai, he's at 58s. Oh, okay. They yeah. had the guys in 58s. One of, one of those him, yeah. scrapbook pictures, yeah. you know, from his career or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, happened, there you go. You know, it's like one of those things, like, you're familiar, and it's like, yeah. wow, man, he couldn't use his arm. And here I go, the day he gives me his seat, yeah, what a trip. I end yeah, up right? with my left arm not working. What yeah. a trip, man. <laughs> the cursed seat. <laughs> yeah, we had a guy who was a, a medic in Afghanistan, a, a Navy corpsman, mm-hmm. and that was, yeah, when he, he, he had taken a post, and the last, I think, three guys that had his spot were blown up. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. I'm, yeah. I, I don't want that. Yeah. And he volunteered <laughs> for it. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, ah, screw it And, and I volunteered for this yeah. spot, and here yeah. I go, this is what happened. But, you know, like I said, I, I landed on my feet. I can use my arm, and everybody's like, dude, how's the arm doing? I'm like, dude, I still got it. Yeah. It, it works. And is it the strongest thing? It's getting there. Yeah. You know, at first it was like really, really, really weak. But I'm getting there. You know, I can plank now. Sex was kind of hard with one arm, but <laughs> <laughs> but it looked cool. <laughs> but it looked cool, you know. <laughs> I'm like, babe, I can't get, I can't do that. You gotta get on top. Uh, <laughs> don't look at that. Don't look. <laughs> don't look at. <laughs> dude, it was the ugliest thing ever, man. I couldn't put on yeah. socks. It was the whole. Dude, was, try putting on your socks with one hand, dude. I don't wear socks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> try it. Um, <laughs> man, have you gone back to Glamis since? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually for Halloween. I can't wait to go. Oh cool, yeah. man. You still got the side by side? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like right. you know, it's a little bent up, but it's just a war wound. And everybody's like. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, well, you going back? And I'm like, dude, I got way too much invested now. I'm not a quitter. Yeah, now you yeah. got a good story every <laughs> right. time you're there. Yeah. Yeah. You're a celebrity yeah. there. I look like a quitter now. Check Listen. out this dude's arm, yeah. bro. Yeah. When they say keep your arm in, you keep <laughs> like, your yeah. arm in, kid. So, you keep oh, your arm in. Back to the moral yeah. of the story. Yeah. I put nets on the windows now. There you go. Ah. Like, I used to look at people with nets on the windows. I'm like, dude, what do you got nets Man. for? Real yeah. shit. That's why. Put nets on your windows. Put nets on your windows, Put folks. nets, arm restraints, whatever, because I know they're going to stick my arm out. But it was just a natural reaction. Yeah. Could not stop it. 
Yeah, so, man. And I've been doing it for a long time. And it was just one of those things where it was like, dude, you know not to stick your arms out. Yeah, no shit. I tell everybody who gets in my car, don't stick your arms out the window. Yeah. And the first thing I did was put my arm down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the info. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I was, uh, you know, because we knew we were coming on. And I told Ben, you know, he had, he had compartment syndrome. And you, m- my wife, Bernadette, just graduated PA school. And I was like, man, compartment syndrome, like, you don't see it hardly ever uh, uh, on the paramedic yeah. side. Like I was, That's I was not like field treatment for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, I was talking to Ben. Like the only time that we would maybe see it in the field is when we like you'll get like construction workers that are digging like you know trenches and shit like that that collapse. Yeah, people get trapped. You get something, mm-hmm. somebody like trapped where you you know, or you get your you know you get something caught somewhere or something like that right. and it, it's sitting there and you, it, and it takes time to extricate them and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You could get it there, and then you also have issues with um. With uh, when you do have something in trap like that, and then it relieves the pressure, those cells that have that, that have uh, that have uh, that where you've had cell death in there, the byproducts of that will will make your your whole system. It'll basically like dump into your bloodstream. Right. You know what I mean? And it'll make your whole system acidic, and you could get uh, really sick from that. So we have like bi- sodium bicarb that we would start in IV and give somebody sodium bicarb to counteract that. Um, causes bronchospasms too, so we'd give you know albuterol. But other than that, there's like nothing really that we can do. Like we yeah. can't do a fasciotomy in in the field or anything right. like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It just damn, no, I gotta cut bad. this Scalpel. now. Damn it! Yeah, give me, give me, give me a steak knife. Damn it! It, it doesn't happen that fast. It's one of those things where yeah. you're like, okay, did you crush your arm? And then yeah. that's when you got to worry about it. And it was the same thing. Everybody's like, dude, I can't believe the hospital in Brawley didn't immediately take you to surgery when you said you crushed your arm. Yeah. And I was like, well, I told them like the car fell on my arm, but I told them like my arm's broken. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. no, and I'm not really wrong. Like, dude, I'm, I broke my arm. No big deal, dude. I was so wrong. Yeah, like I almost lost my arm. Yeah. yeah. So like that. <laughs> so then that lends itself to also like, if the paramedics ever come to or get called for you for whatever fucking reason, like a lot of times something will happen to somebody. Like somebody will get injured. And they're not the ones that call. Like somebody that saw it happen calls or whatever, and we'll show up, and the patient will be like, "No, I'm fine," you know, whatever, whatever. And then they downplay, you know what I mean? Right. Wh- what's bothering them? It's like if we're already there and we're already talking to you, and I'm not saying that th- that you did no. this, but if we're already there and we're talking to you, just give us accurate information because who knows, man? Like just like just like Leroy, you know, somebody who isn't aware of the, of this type of injury might look at it and think, ah, oh, just, you know, oh, it just hurts a little bit. But if we if we know all the facts and we know, you know, the mechanism yeah, of injury, we can, tell you what's gonna happen. We can kind of give you a little bit better educated guess of what we think might happen if you don't go get this treated or you know what I mean? Right. But we can't give you that if we don't have all the proper information. If we mm-hmm. if, if you're if you're hiding, you know, keeping stuff from us or downplaying. Uh, stuff like that. It makes it more difficult for us to help you, basically. And that's all my job is, and 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 right. Leroy's job is, and Ben's job is, is all we're trying to do is help people. That's why it always cracks me up when pe- people get pissed off at us, like like we're the cops or something like that. It's like, hey man, I'm just, I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm not here a to cop, help man. you. I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm really here to help you. Yeah. I don't care what you took. That's, just tell me. <laughs> and that's not to say that a lot of cops aren't there to help you, but I'm just saying, don't be mad yeah. at me, bro. I'm here to help right. you. Right. I don't care. What did you take it, so I could help you? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm here to take you to jail, bro. Just tell me I'm the truth. Save your life. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ooh, man. All right. So actually, it actually makes it. I have a blank canvas for a cool ass tattoo. Yeah. Just trying to figure out. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. The, hey. <laughs> Pump yeah. your brakes, son. Pump your brakes. I see, I see, right? I see I a, a You're talking about a swimming pool, right? Yeah. yeah. Kind of fishing like, yeah. pond. This looks like yeah. a total big vagina. Yeah. Like, it really does. Yeah. But. I, I asked the doctor. He said I can't tattoo the middle of it. Oh, man. And so yeah. I got to figure something out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just this yeah, is be just something skin cool, over man. muscle. Yeah. yeah. So there's nothing for the ink to go into. Yeah. 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 Shit, cool leg. Put a boat on it. Yeah. yeah I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was. I don't know. I'm gonna ha- have some wires holding it open. I don't know. Yeah. I got to figure something out. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Like some something it open. Yeah. yeah. Like a like a quato. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. kind of some kind of some kind of three D kind of picture because it's yeah it's three D. Wade. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it would be cool, man. Totally. So yeah. I'm just trying to figure out the right. We'll thing. brainstorm. Yeah. 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 Good ideas come to me at night, so I'll yeah. text you, you in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, DM us with uh, tattoo ideas for yeah. uh, Leroy Scar. For a big open. Yeah, yeah. we'll it's post pretty, a good pretty picture. Cool if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, if you got a tattoo of a scar on around the scar, let me know. Yeah, because yeah, it is a gnarly scar. <laughs> if you if you are watching at home, definitely. Yeah. Leroy being here gives us another opportunity because we haven't had a guy who was a special duty captain Uh-oh. in here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs>
It is what it is, man. Yeah. You know, when you become a captain, uh, that's one of the, one of the things is you kind of sign on to um, to do a two year stint in a special duty spot. When we space special duty, there's, you know, far, you think of a fire department, you think of the the uh, you know the fire engines, the ambulances, the helicopters, all this stuff. We we mentioned. You think of the captain being in the station. Yeah, basically. yeah, and assigned to a. To and in a reality, unit. there's a whole another administrative aspect to the to every fire department. And uh, different departments and, you know, especially in a big city like ours, there's different departments that deal with homeland security. There's different departments that deal with city planning and stuff like that. And so the department fills those vacancies with captains of different levels. So Um, everyone has to do two years. Well, not everyone, but it's it's a two two year. Once they move you into a special duty spot, it's a two year stint. Oh, but I mean, everybody has to do one special duty stint. You're supposed uh, when to. They become a captain. Supposed You're supposed to. to. Okay. It, 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 it really kind of pick and choose. It's not. It used to be kind of punishment or one of those things where people didn't want. Yeah. But on my spot, like I got the coolest spot in town. Like I do every sporting event, every yeah. party. Every, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every it's concert, perks, yeah. every. See, it's a lot, that, of, long, cool a lot of long hours. Yeah. But. Really, really, really cool. I see some really cool stuff. So, so you're the mass gathering guy. I am the mass yeah. gathering guy. You want to have a music festival, you got to come see me. See, so it's full circle because <laughs> that ties into the Mac. So you're like not doing shit now? Or what? I am, since... haven't done anything since <laughs> February. I can't have anything. <laughs> yeah. Because what, what is it? Is it 5,000 or more or 10,000 or more for you? Oh, it's Pe- over 100. People. Over 100. Oh, you there you only have to be required if it's over a hundred. So every bar, restaurant, anything that has occupants oh, over a over hundred people. Over 100 period. people oh, okay. I comes through is in my shop. Ah. All right. Because so. I know we get on the uh the incident action plans when it's I think ten thousand at an event. Right. Is when so they have to bring in that's the when we have them make them have a medical plan and things like that. Yeah, exactly. And so that's where you come in for yeah. us. If everything over I have fourteen inspectors that cover four hundred and some square miles. Every bar, restaurant, anything over a hundred people. Has an inspector. Has an inspector assigned yeah. to it, and it falls under my shop. So, wow. So when you say, uh, would you say a medical action plan? Yeah, incident it, action plan, IAPs, uh, whenever there's going to be a mass event, 10,000 or more people anywhere in L.A., they have to get permits for it, plan it, plan it with the city. LAFD makes a plan that includes MAC and basically the emergency rooms. So we're yeah. all we're all set. Everyone's aware of based it based on where it yeah. is. Yeah, who's, in case who's there's a mass casualty where. incident. Yeah, if the shit hits the fan, we're already all ready to go. Right. So it's it's a lot of planning that goes into it. It's actually really really fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually really love my spot. Like, I yeah. and and that happens with special duty spot too. Sometimes you'll get you'll get uh, something uh, cool. A, a guy yeah. that me- meshes perfectly with the job and yeah. winds up hanging out there's there and staying cool there forever. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I get to go yeah. to music festivals. Yeah. Like, what does it mean? Yeah. Right. You know, it's one of those things where I think it's a. They say a two-year stint, but I think it's unjust to the work you do to turn around and leave. Sure. And you become a subject matter, mass, matter expert, and all of a sudden you get this new guy who doesn't know anything. Yeah. 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 So it's one of those things where I took over Scott Miller's spot and I'm like, okay. Yeah. I, I learned it. I. I it's its own under, animal. I studied under him for about yeah. three, six months, but now I want to write the book. Yeah, like, yeah. I want to write the book so the next guy that falls behind me is not. Yeah, sure. I ain't starting from square one, right? Yeah, because yeah. because that's the thing too. People assume like, all right, you're just at like parties or something, you know, big events. It's it's fun, but shit hits the fan sometimes, and yeah. we'll ta- you'll take a hundred people it's, out it's of an event, and it. it's on you. Well, it, yeah? it's, we say a Let lot. Of, we can tell people a lot of no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's, I want to say yeah. Like right now, I want to say yeah so bad, mm-hmm. you know, because there's nothing going on. Yeah. But it's a no. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. You just can't. Yeah. It's a lot that goes into it. I mean, it. Uh, the, I think this pandemic has, has exposed like how how important it is to be prepared. Uh, you know, as a as a city. Yeah. You know, the, the different departments. How how all these little and you've talked about it before, man, in the county. Uh, how all these like. You know, uh, like we have the earthquake packet. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like you got to make sure the earthquake packet's there, and then it's got all the shit in it. You know, eh, you know, not very. But when you have an earthquake, right. it's you like, know, oh no. shit, we got the earthquake packet. Get it? Where's you know? this page? Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> Who Yo, took the pen oh, out get of here? Get the packet. Oh shit, the packet. You know. Um, so yeah, man, it's you know all the all these jobs are important. Um, these special duty jobs, yeah. and it's it's um. Yeah, some people love it, and some, some people can't wait to get the hell out of it. You know, I, I as an AO, you know, we all had our aversion like to the Fire Prevention Bureau. Sure, yeah. And I work now that I'm up there, and I worked with a lot of guys when they were young firemen, and they're they're okay. Yeah. But they really, really excel. Sure. 
in the five events bureau. Like they're truly, truly professionals, and they're not the person I thought that I worked with before. Yeah. Like now I'm like, God, this guy's a great inspector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. maybe you never he, know. Yeah. He wasn't the guy that fit in with 14 guys in the fire station. You know, maybe yeah. he just wasn't that guy. But you put him in a car, tell him, hey, this is what you're in charge of, and yeah. follow the fire code. Kills it. Like he kills it. And so I think that's <laughs> something that gets lost. <laughs> Uh, in the fire service, man, and I've talked about it with Ben before, is uh, is uh, especially now with everything being so divided and every, every everything so like you know right versus left, and it, it seems like you're you're you you pick a team and you're on that team and you hate yeah. everybody else these days. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, I try to, and, and you know how the fire department is a pretty conservative place. Uh, you know is, what I mean? It's Fox it News it all is. day yeah. long, yeah. and yeah. and I uh, you know, uh, but I still get along. I consider everybody at that at the station my friend. Mm. Um, thank you. Um, but but it just goes back to like what I was talking about with Ben. How nobody on the planet Earth looks at the world exactly the way I look at it. You know what I mean? And nobody's had the same experiences as me. Nobody's been uh, exposed to the same things as me. So I can't expect somebody, and even with rookies coming up and stuff like that, like I can't expect you to be as uh, uh, as um, educated in tools and equipment and stuff like that as I am, or used to using tools, or you know knowing about construction or something like that. I can't expect you to know all the stuff I know already. I gotta like teach you what I can teach you and understand that you might be coming from a different po point of learning. Right. You know what I mean? And and treat you accordingly. And I think uh, traditionally in the fire department. It's been, uh, you know, you come on, you don't know, you don't know shit, and and yeah, uh, you better learn learn things the way I I'm gonna teach them to you and learn them the way, you know, that I know them. And if you don't do it that way, you're a piece of shit. Right. You know what I mean? And you're never gonna get the opportunity. So, what's your operation, bro? Exactly. <laughs> you're not gonna ever get the opportunity to shine in a position like an inspector or you know a paramedic or something like that, where that might be more inclined to how to your skill set or how you grew up or how you learn. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and you just get beaten down and beaten out of the out of the um, out of the job just by by you know um, you know a guy beating you down basically right. because you, you're not like him. You know, right? You're not like him, and you don't you don't you don't. I mean, honestly, I hate to say you don't fit, but you just don't fit in a task yeah, force. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And exactly. some single engine guys don't fit in task force. They don't get along with 15, 16 guys mm -hmm. yeah. or, and girls. Or, you know, you might be more of a single engine guy. Or, like I said, before I'd never been in the fire prevention, never even imagined being assigned to the fire prevention yeah. bureau. Mm -hmm. But now that I see the skill set that these guys have, the, the professionalism these guys have, and what they do and understand what they do, I have a whole new respect for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whole new respect. Yeah, and that's usually how things happen. You know, when you think one way about something that you don't a hundred percent know about, and then you mm -hmm. go, oh, let me learn about. It. Oh shit! Right. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. All right, I get it. You know what I mean? But but just in general, I like to I, I like to keep an open mind when, when I talk to people when I meet new people and shit like that. You know? Well, I mean, come on, I've been on the fire department since I was a young. And you exactly. That's all I know. It's the only job I ever had. Yeah. So yeah. this is as how I was raised, and yeah. it took me twenty five years to wander. To ask to be come to the fire prevention bureau, yeah. and I'm like, dude, are you for real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah, do it for you because you're my friend. But you know, okay, I'll, I'll go check it out, and I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Man. Nice, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's in a the good sweet spot. spot of the bureau, though, man. That that's the part that and, has perks, and I, dude. And I yeah, wound up fun. in the best best spot there. So yeah, like I said, yeah. dude. Can't Leroy, beat Leroy it, lucky, right? Dude, Leroy lucky. <laughs> there were there were festivals like weekend festivals, right? And when you're you're assigned to the command post when you're working these events, right? And the command post is in the VIP area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you go, you, they have to give you all access wristband to be in the VIP so you can work in the command post. So I do that on a Friday, volunteer to work the Friday. Yeah. I got the wristband for the rest of the weekend. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So I got a free yeah. all, all access. So you work the Friday, you confiscate the ecstasy and come back <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> Ben's running around yeah. in a tutu. Dude, it's a great <laughs> spot, man. Yeah, it's, man. It's good. I get to see concerts that I've never seen. Even, they're not even in English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I go to all kinds of concerts. Like, yeah. you know, you think, oh, yeah, this, that, and the other. No, I go to some great concerts that are in a whole another language. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I got to see some awesome <laughs> stuff on duty, man. Like, right. I can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, so it gives you a new appreciation. But thank you guys for having me, man. It's, hey, it's thanks been, for coming, man. Awesome, man. I really you were appreciate great, it. dude. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's funny because I I saw you and I go, oh shoot, man, you should come on about about uh, your arm, and then I was like, oh shit, didn't you have a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, Double but I appreciate whammy. I yeah. appreciate you coming on and being so open about everything, man. I I think uh, I think especially with the bleed story, you know what I mean? Like, 
anytime you can get the story out there and tell people, you know, about signs and symptoms that even us as medical professional and people that are, you know, exposed to this stuff all the time, yeah, still pass ignore, up, yeah. uh, you know, it's something that somebody in the public very easily could do the same. So I, I think it's good to educate people on that. Um, thank you for coming out, man. Oh, I no really problem, appreciate man. it. No problem. Got a T-shirt great. for you. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. I can't wait. Yeah. Anything you want to promote while you're on here? No. You want people to follow you. I want you? everybody to stay safe, man. If everybody wear your mask, we we'll get these parties back. There you go. Exactly. Wear your mask. Yeah. You know, we get, get the Dodgers get back and the, the do. Lakers back. Yeah, you exactly. know, let's hockey back. Something. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Something. This was going to be our year. Uh, you guys yeah. can find me at uh, Danny Gonzo thirty four on Instagram and Twitter. Follow me at Ben Nine Humor, Ben Number Nine Humor, like Benign Tumor. Follow the show at PRC Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can also email us, contact PRCPod at gmail.com if you have questions, you want to tell us your own story, or if you want a t shirt, these hot Please Remain Calm t shirts with our cool ass logo. 20 bucks L and XL. You can Venmo us, DM us for details, or drop a five star review. Send us a screenshot of it, and you got a T-shirt coming your way, my friend. People really do win. It's already been happening. Tell your friends about the podcast, please, if you enjoyed it. We enjoy doing it. We want to keep on doing it. Uh, we'd like to keep growing, so spread the word if you can. Yes, sir. Shout out and to Brent Urban, at Brent Urban, U-R-B-N, on Instagram. His mu music is tight. Find him on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah, PRC Pod, Apple Podcast, YouTube, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher. Hit us up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, please do remain calm. About to run against it and with a little bit of soul, no times.